On a macro level and a micro level, there's been a lot of talk and a lot of hope of getting a vaccine uh, by the end of this year or the beginning of next year. Uh, what do you think about that timeline? Every expert I've had on my show, and I've had members of the task force, I've had uh, the doctors who run vaccine trials, they all say end of this year is probably the soonest we can rationally approve uh, the vaccine. It just takes that long. Dr. Mehmet Oz is host of the Dr. Oz Show here on WISN 12. I spoke with him about the upcoming season and also about human vaccine trials for COVID-19. We're going to have complications with these vaccines. And the issue is not whether you're going to have a complication and shut it down. It's how are you going to deal with that complication? Is it serious enough to preempt you from giving it to people to prevent COVID-19? Or is it tolerable because it's relatively minor or addressable or so rare it's still worth it? We're heading into flu season in the next uh, couple weeks or so. Uh, what advice would you give to people who are concerned about coronavirus and the common flu? The flu vaccine will be available in the next week or two. Please get the vaccine. If you've never gotten it before, give it a shot. When you get the, a flu, a, you know, fever, it sniffles, you don't feel good, you're not going to know if it's the flu or COVID. And if you get the vaccine and you can avoid that this year, doubly beneficial. And a new season of Dr. Oz premieres right here on WISN 12 on September 14th. Reporting in the newsroom, I'm Sheldon Dutez, WISN 12 News. Dr. Oz airs weekday afternoons at 2 right here on WISN 12. The season premiere is this Monday. On Capitol Hill, a coronavirus aid package has failed to advance in the Senate. 12 News' Sally Kidd is in Washington, where the blame game is well underway. The GOP's $500 billion COVID-19 rescue package blocked by Democrats in the Senate. Democrats have blocked us at every turn. The bill would have provided enhanced unemployment benefits of $300 a week, money for COVID-19 testing and vaccine development, and funding for small businesses and schools, among other provisions. A emaciated bill that hardly does a thing, that leaves out so many Americans, that doesn't come close to meeting the moment. Democrats say it's laden with poison pills, including liability protections for businesses. It is a one-sided offering and it fails in so many respects. They'd rather have no bill, zero funding, and a political weapon. Democrats say they would rather have the $3 trillion bill the House passed in May, which McConnell says is a non-starter in the Senate. Let's not have tokenism when we have a major disaster. It's not clear what happens next. I think it's too bad that people can't come together and get a bill done. Well, political observers say it looks increasingly likely that Congress will not get a new relief bill passed before they head home for the fall campaign. Reporting from Washington, I'm Sally Kidd. Now, a group of unemployed workers had a rally outside Senator Ron Johnson's Milwaukee office today. I'm one of the people affected by this pandemic. Um, I lost my job due to the pandemic, and um, right now, we cannot live off $100, $200 a week, you know, so we need that $600 and we demanded it. The group was hoping to convince Congress to restore the 600 unemployment payments, or $600 unemployment payments, that is, that were issued earlier in the year. Now, Senator Ron Johnson issued this statement. It is unfortunate Democrats won't take yes for an answer. Once again, they have taken the position it's either their way or the highway. Just because Republicans won't agree to spend $3 trillion and give Democrats everything they demanded, unemployed workers won't get additional federal unemployment benefits, and small businesses won't get get needed financial support. Joyce? Toya, breaking news regarding the November election. The Wisconsin Supreme Court ordered that no more absentee ballots be mailed out for now. They ruled no more ballots will go out until they can decide who should be on the ballot. Right now, Green Party candidate Howie Hawkins and rapper Kanye West are separately challenging the Elections Commission's decision to keep them off the ballot. Municipal election clerks face a September 17th deadline to mail ballots. As of today, nearly one million absentee ballots had been requested. Toya? Oh, it's been another rainy day. I'm sorry, I was so distracted by this weather because it's miserable out here. Um, Chief Meteorologist Mark Baden is joining me and I was taking a little bit of a breather outside of this mask, but 
I really do need to know when we're going to get a break from this weather. Uh, and uh, I appreciate you being out there in the midst of this so you can show us how lovely it is outside. We're stuck in the clouds. It's another rainy, gloomy day. This isn't going to last forever. Let's get a live look outside, show you what's happening down there at Oak Creek, where uh, you can probably guess it is still on the cloudy side uh, and will continue to be cloudy and rainy and very, very gray. Love when that happens. So it's really not very pretty out there. Let's take a look what's going to happen as we head throughout the rest of the evening as we go out the door and uh, we're going to talk about those temperatures being on the uh, not so comfortable side in the 50s. There we go. Things are popping along now. Uh, still raining out there this evening. Temperatures in the 50s Friday morning. Temperatures in the 50s, finally getting back to the 60s as we head into Friday afternoon when we get rid of these doggone clouds and finally see the sun coming up in Weather Watch 12. Threatened with a lawsuit over a campaign sign, but a Pewaukee attorney is standing his ground. WISN 12 News Hillary Minson is live in Pewaukee now, and the attorney is displaying a Joe Biden for president sign. Right, Joyce, and that's right over my shoulder here. Now, this attorney had until 5 o'clock last night to bring it down or face legal action, and as you can see, it's still up. For the past couple of weeks, attorney James Gendy's law office sign was next to this Biden-Harris 2020 sign. I am a supporter of the Democratic ticket. Uh, I think that um, there's a lot of discussion going on about who's the appropriate um, leader for this country, and I just wanted to show my support. Gendy owns the advertising rights to the monument sign for Windsor Executive Office condominium suites in Pewaukee. Well, I didn't feel like I had to ask permission. But the condo association threatened legal action if Gendy didn't take down the Biden sign by 5 p.m. Wednesday. This letter said take it down. Yes. The condo association policy says signs are only for businesses and they can't take more than one slot. Do you feel that the condo association went after you purely because it was a political sign? Well, I can't read anybody's mind, but uh, those slots remained open for... Uh, I believe two and a half years before any interest was shown. Uh, and when the political signage went up, it uh, created uh, some havoc. But before the five o'clock deadline, Gendy says they reached a compromise. Thursday, his law office sign came down. Biden Harris stayed up. Are you happy with the compromise? I'm satisfied. I'm trying to uh, make as little uh, issue as possible while also uh, pursuing my First Amendment right to freedom of speech. 12 News contacted the attorney for the condo association. He had no comment. And Hillary, the attorney leases out the signs, so would he allow another business to advertise for President Trump? Yeah, Joyce, he said he would. You know, there is a monthly fee associated with taking up one of these slots here. So he says as long as they pay that, he would be fine with it. Right now, these two open slots are slated to go to a realty group. Joyce. Hillary Mintz reporting live in Pewaukee. Milwaukee police are investigating a fatal shooting. It happened around 1 this afternoon near Hopkins and Villard. Police say a 23-year-old man was shot during an argument near a gas station. A 22-year-old man has been arrested. Criminal charges are expected to be sent to the district attorney's office. Wildfires continue to burn out of control in several western states. Still ahead, how quickly the fires are spreading and the emotional reaction from people who have been forced to get out and leave everything behind. And while you won't be able to see a concert at the Riverside this fall, you might be able to see a ghost. The ghost tour is happening there next month.
Wildfires have killed as many as eight people in the western United States. Another 12 are missing. 14 states are dealing with uncontained fires. Tens of thousands of people have been evacuated. Hundreds more have already lost their homes. Everything we have here, we have nothing but this here going to my back, and that's it. But I just can't believe that the whole thing is gone, everything. As people face the task of rebuilding their lives, Oregon's governor warns this could be the greatest loss of human life and property from wildfires in that state's history. Coming up all new tonight on 12 News at 6. Too soon for Halloween? Some businesses are already opening and cities are already making their plans. Kids are excited, but are parents concerned about trick-or-treating in a pandemic? Plus, ballot drop boxes in Milwaukee, what they look like and where they'll be placed across the city. It's all brand new. So stay right here after World News Tonight with David Muir. Toya? Well, the Riverside Theater has a reputation of being one of the most haunted places in the entire state of Wisconsin. So just in time for Halloween, the venue is opening up for ghost tours. Seasoned ghost hunters will lead small groups to give guests a look at so-called hot spots in the theater that aren't normally open to the public. In the basement, a number of people have heard things. So it's not unusual when you're uh, in a place that's haunted for different places to have kind of primary types of hauntings. Down here, people hear things. There was actually a growl is what it sounded like that was captured on audio. Now the tours start October 9th and run through Halloween. All tours do require a mask and are limited to more th no more than 10 people. Well, the weather, uh, it's been kind of spooky lately. Who are you going to call? Mark Baby. Oh, <laughs> Nicely done. Hey, Mark, it would be nice to see the sun again. It really would be nice to see the sun again. It's been cloudy all week. We haven't had anything like this for months and months and months. We had a wonderful summer of sunshine. The sun will return. You still have to have more patience, though. Rain falling right now. It's on the light side in Milwaukee. This uh, from... The, our camera located at Milwaukee Institute of Art and Design. Uh, shockingly, there's not a lot of uh, boat traffic out on the Milwaukee River right now, for good reason. We take you out to Delavan. Not a whole lot of boat traffic out here either. That's Delavan Lake, 58 degrees from our camera at Lake Lawn Resort. It is crummy out there. We've had a lot of rain. This is over the last seven days. Some places, this is radar estimates now, some places picking up as much as three inches of rain uh, in the last week. Lesser amounts in our northern counties, but everybody getting the rain and everyone's lawn is starting to turn back to a very deep green and it's going to grow rapidly. It already started. So let's show you where we've got the rain. Uh, not really falling anymore in our northern counties, so we're going to get some breaks here. Finally, uh, it's been pretty persistent today, but still a steady rain across all of Ozark. County. There's no thunderstorms in this. It's just that nuisance, nasty rain. Make sure you're turning on your headlights. Uh, if you're out there out and about in this rain, you can see it's just this big batch that's moving in next week. Next week, sunshine and 70s. The grass is going to continue to grow like nuts, so be be prepared to cut it not just once next week, probably twice. Can't cut it really. Not a good chance to cut it tomorrow or Saturday because there's more rain on the way. Finally, on Sunday, we'll start to dry things out and really dry it out uh, into next week. Temperatures are still chilly for this time of year. Keep in mind, our average high is still in the mid 70s. We're way below that. Water temperature is still pretty comfortable, though. It's 65. Now, it's still cold if you're uh, getting in that. Here's the interesting thing right now. You can see where the sunshine has been happening, but these areas right here are actually going to be cold because they've got clear skies for tonight. That allows for radiational cooling. Frost advisory for almost half of the state. Freeze warning in the north, northwestern portion of the state. There's the clear skies. Clouds elsewhere. One good thing that's come with the rain, the pollen counts are way down, so it's much more comfortable out there. Satellite and radar shows that very stubborn rain still sticking around. As we move into future cast here, that weak high pressure center wasn't able to clear these clouds out. So here comes the next batch of rain as we head into Friday. I think much of the day tomorrow is dry. Showers moving in again later in the day and then more rain as we head into Saturday. Even the possibility of some thunderstorms finally clearing as we head into Sunday. 63 back up to 70 on Saturday and then looking much better. 73 degrees. Come on, sunshine. You can do it. And most of next week looks wonderful. 
had temperatures back in the 70s. Wouldn't be surprised if we get back to 80 degrees. So we can say goodbye to this awful week, but it's not done yet. All right, a little more patience. Thank you, Mark. Tomorrow marks the 19th anniversary of the terror attacks of September 11th. The ceremonies in honor of the lives lost typically bring thousands to ground zero in New York. How this year's event will be different because of the pandemic. And are you ready for some football? The NFL kicks off tonight. What you can expect to see and what will be missing because of coronavirus. Tomorrow marks the 19th anniversary of the September 11th terror attacks. There will be some changes to this year's remembrance ceremonies because of the pandemic. There will be no live reading of the victims' names in New York. Instead, organizers will play recordings of family members reading the names. Vice President Mike Pence is expected to attend. Meanwhile, President Donald Trump and Democratic presidential challenger Joe Biden plan to visit the Flight 93 National Memorial in Pennsylvania. It's not clear if their visits will overlap. NFL football returns tonight, also with some changes amid the pandemic. The defending Super Bowl champs, the Kansas City Chiefs, will host the Houston Texans. Kansas City is one of only six stadiums allowing fans inside, but only 22 percent of the seats will be filled. That's about 16,000 people. Masks will be required. There will be no cheerleaders, no mascots, and no sideline reporters. Also had an update on a couple we've been following for months, how this pair of Special Olympic athletes finally got to say I do.